Okay, so we've been in this series of messages on the Psalms all summer long, and uh, one of the highlights for me has been getting a chance to read and uh, uh, and share with you the Psalms that you've written, as, as each of you have turned them in, and um, each one's different. Uh, this is one that uh, is very unique, and uh, and yet it really struck me. Um, so this is from one of you. Okay. Oh Lord, you know me and love me, and you find me buried here in paper and clutter. I've been here a long time, and you know that. You know that I'm trying, I'm, I'm hanging on to this perishable stuff. You wait for me to hang on to you alone. Why has paper been such a powerful magnet for me? You're a, a god of order. You desire me to learn from you and put my house in order. I know this in my mind. Now help me do it. I'm so tired of years of talking, thinking, and praying about this. You must be tired of this too. You know it will free me to do your work. Not spending time trying to find things in piles or sort and resort and, and resort, costing valuable time. You want me to focus on people, value them, not things. Blow your spirit through my house and through my spirit and my mind and enable me to let go. Give me energy and motivation to deal with this now. May your powerful spirit free me to act and not procrastinate. Praise be to you, O patient God of my years. Give me a new start today, for I have felt hopeless to ever deal with this. You know my rut and how I avoid it all. May my house be a house of order, always ready to receive people. Free me up to serve those around me. Give me wisdom what to do with this stuff. Enable me to open my hands and let it go. May you get the glory and encourage others for this powerful change in the way I live. O loving, caring, and powerful God of order. That sound, that ring true? Sure does. You know, I've been I've been saving it. That was one of the first psalms turned in by y'all, and I and I was saving it because I thought, well, does this work with the blues or does it work with gospel? You know, and and, and uh, how how are you going to make this thing work? So um, today I'm I'm uh, supposed to be preaching on Psalm 27, which is about a singular focus and not being a uh, distracted and all those things. So Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil people advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies, my foes attack me, they'll stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me. Even then, I will be confident. One thing, one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He'll hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high on a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me and at his tabernacle. I'll sacrifice with shouts of joy. I'll sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, Seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Now, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn away in anger. You've been my helper. Don't reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes. For false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I'm still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. So Lord, teach us from this, your word. Teach us how we might be of single focus and how we may not be distracted and turn away from you, but how we may be confident in you regardless of what's going on all around us. 
That's our need today in Jesus' name. I believe that this is the psalm for people who have spiritual ADHD or ADD, attention deficit disorder. This is the psalm for them, uh, for them, <laughs> for me. Um, I always have to preach to myself. Now, I not only have spiritual ADD, but I also have, you know, regular ADD too. And uh, I was thinking about this, why it's so hard to stay focused. And then I realized today, for example, every Sunday I come here early, like about 8 or 8.15 or so, so I can have time to, you know, prepare myself, heart and mind, to be with y'all. And um, it's a good time to just sit at the desk and kind of go over the scripture and pray and just sort of get focused so I'm not distracted, you know, now. So today, we actually got here a little early. Uh, we got up and we went over to Safeway and got the donuts, you know, that's really important, and uh, some fruit, and came back here, and it was like 8, 10. And I thought, wow, we got all this time. This is so great. I can really get focused today. This will be so good, just resting in the Word. And because this is all about not being distracted, right? Not being diverted. And so I was sitting at my desk and everything, and, and then I thought, oh, wow. I better check the bathrooms and see how the paper towel supply is because the AA group steals the paper towels on Friday night and we never have any. And, uh, and so sure enough, I went to the men's restroom, no paper towels and uh, things were a mess. And, and uh, so I thought, well, I better check the women's bathroom too, you know, a warning knock. And then in I went. And then, uh, yeah, they were out of paper towels too. And that toilet paper's gone. I'm the only one who can change that. And so I'm, I'm, reloading the paper towels and restocking the toilet paper and all those things. And I thought, you know, good. Okay. Even refill the soap dispensers. Ha, <laughs> yeah. You don't have to just add water anymore. You can actually put soap in there. And uh, so everything's going good. I thought, this is great. Now I'm going to go back and uh, I can really spend some time with the Lord and get ready. And just as I was going in my door, I noticed that the light was out in the hallway <laughs> right in front of my door. It was like this dark spot in the hallway. Uh, well, I can't have that. How can I sit and focus if uh, the light's out, right? It, all I do is think about the light. So I went and got a ladder out of the closet and I found some bulbs, climbed up and I changed that and the light was good and everything. And then I looked over and right just by the stairs, there was another one out. <laughs> and I went over and got the ladder over there and got another bulb and replaced that. And then I set the ladder aside, went back in, and I noticed there was one out down by the women's restroom, right outside there. I thought, well, they can't, and they'll stumble there. You know, we can't have that. So I went and got the ladder and changed that bulb. And as I was bringing the ladder back, I noticed there was another one out in the hallway here that was out. I thought, my goodness. And so I went and changed that one. And as I was changing that, I thought, I have really done good. And I noticed the one over the table here, right in the entryway, was out. Five bulbs out, and I took care of it. Boom, it's so good. And uh, now I can put the ladder away and everything's great, and I can go in and spend some time with the Lord. So I go in and I'm sitting down and everything, and then I thought, you know, I better get that coffee going. I better get that coffee going, because you guys are going to come in here and want your coffee. So, okay, this will just take a second. And so I went and did the coffee, and then I thought, you know, we've got to cut the fruit up. Uh, you know, because that's important. And so I started cutting fruit, and then pretty soon some people came in, and we were talking, and then, uh, well, why don't I cut the donuts while I'm sitting here, too? We'll just do the donuts, too, and get those going, and um, let's get it all out there. And uh, cream cheese. We've got to get cream cheese for the bagels. So went back in the office and went, well, people are starting to come. I, I better just get my stuff and go in. And I thought, what the heck? This was the day I was going to have for meditation and prayer and praying for all of you and, and preparing my own heart. And I'm like chasing stuff, you know, anything that comes to mind, go do that, go do that, go do that. And I realized that's what happens so much in all of our lives. We, we have great intention and we want to do something and we're focused and we, and we think this is really important. And as soon as I take care of these things, right, then I'll be able to really focus. I think that's why when uh, and Jesus was calling people to follow him and, and as one person said, oh, Lord, I really want to follow you. I'm going to be really faithful. I, mean, I just got to go home and take care of some family business. 
And Jesus said, well, why don't you let them bury themselves? Because when you, when you go take care of family business, there's going to be more family business. And there's going to be more. And you never will really follow me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then it says this in verse 4. One thing I ask of the Lord. This is what I seek. Just one thing. That I dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. We seek the Lord. And, and we focus on the Lord. And we don't get distracted. Now... I've always heard this verse, you know, since I was a kid, that people quote this verse. And it's usually quoted by somebody who's really uh, spiritually mature and kind of a, above all the problems, you know? You, you know people like that, right? And they always talk about, you know, they're really focused on the Lord. And, and they don't seem to have regular problems. And this is why I love the Bible, because this psalm doesn't start with one thing I ask of the Lord, does it? It starts with, when evil people are advancing against me and they're cannibals, they want to eat me, <laughs> they want to devour my flesh. That's pretty graphic, right? We got the cannibals after me, they're going to stumble and fall. And the army is after me and my heart won't fear and war is breaking out. So what it's saying is, I'm going to have this one thing, I'm going to have this focus, I'm going to seek the Lord in the middle of all this chaos, right? It's so easy to say, well, all these things are important. I don't want people to rip my flesh off and devour me. I, I don't want my foes attacking me. I don't want to have an army rise up against me, you know. Lord, as soon as I take care of these things, you got my attention. Well, and of course, guess what? The problems never stop, do they? They don't stop. There's always going to be some other thing. There's always going to be some other thing. And so we have this opportunity to say, Lord, we're going to focus on you, and then we're going to seek you. Now, Jesus says, you know, knock and the door will be open. Seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given to you. Uh, this is throughout all of Scripture, this call to seek. Seek the Lord. And... Uh, I've got a quote for you. Blaise Pascal, who, a friend of yours, you know, 17th century mathematician, so he was really linear in his thinking and very uh, non-ADD. He says this, there's three kinds of people. There's people who seek God and find him, and he says they're reasonable. They're very reasonable. It makes sense. And they're happy. Then he said there's also people who seek God and don't find him. He said, now they're very reasonable too because it's reasonable, it makes sense to seek God, but they're unhappy. So they're reasonable and unhappy. And then there's a third kind. So those who don't seek God and don't find him. And he said, these people are unreasonable and they're unhappy, both. So. I never thought of seeking God as being the reasonable thing to do, right? That, that it's, it's the logical thing. It's, it's not only a, an act of faith, but it's, it's saying, you know, given the choices in my life, this is probably going to end up better than some of the other choices that I make. And, uh, and then David writes this, um, do not hide your face from me. I'm going to seek your face. Do not hide your face from me. Don't turn away in anger. And I thought about this, God's face. And then I remembered, you know, almost every Sunday, I do the same benediction here. I don't know if you know that. Uh, virtually the same benediction I've done for my entire life. And it's, um, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance, which, which is a fancy way of saying smile on you, that he's not only looking at you, but he's smiling at you with love and approval. He's glad to see you. And I thought, that's what this psalmist is reminding us of. 
We can say, Lord, don't hide your face from me. When I seek you, don't, don't turn away. If you're angry or not, don't, don't turn away. Stay connected. I want to see your face. I, I, I want to see you lift up your countenance. Smile on me. I think that's one of the great <clears throat> prayers that we can offer. And, and, um, and David gives us a good example of it. And then he says this, I want you to teach me your way. Teach me your way. And uh, lead me in a straight path because of my enemies. Because of them, not, not in spite of them, not when I don't have any more enemies, you lead me in a straight, it's like, do it because of them. I need your teaching and your guidance, your leadership in my life because of this, right? Because of these distractions. And, and uh, I was thinking about this, you know, uh, not here, but a few years ago, people used to say, I think they were well-meaning, but they were stupid. Yeah, you ever get that where people are well-meaning and stupid at the same time? And, and so I would have people who come up to me fairly regularly, and they would say things just about like this. You know, John, I really want to grow spiritually. I really want to grow to be a mature Christian, a mature follower of Jesus. And if you would only preach better, I could be <laughs> more mature. <laughs> I mean, I've heard variations of that my whole life, but it's probably true. But, but I, and I, I, would, I would always marvel at that because what they're saying is, you know, if you would just be better, then I'd be better. And, and, I, and I look at them and I want to say, you idiot, but I don't at first. You know, I may think it in my heart, but, but I, I go, I'm so glad you want to grow in your faith. That's a good thing. I don't think God doesn't want us to grow. Uh, he, I know he wants me to grow. He's been working in that garden for a long time, you know. And uh, But then I think, uh, you know, uh, Wednesday night, Eileen and I were down in, in California at a birthday party for a friend. I'm not even going to say that, you know, the drummer for Sly and the Family Stone was playing in the band, <laughs> but it was a pretty cool band. The guitar player was Smokey Robinson of the Miracles, so that was pretty good, too. <laughs> anyway, so I had this birthday party, and I got to tell you, this was the finest Mexican food I've ever had in my life. It was fabulous. And it came one day after we ate at Carlos Santana's restaurant in the Bay Area. It was named after his mother. And it was one of the finest Mexican food meals I'd ever had. But this, this dinner topped it. And I thought, I have eaten so good. You know, next week when I eat again, it's going to be so satisfying. Next Wednesday, I think I'll eat again. I think I should eat every Wednesday night. And then I'll really be satisfied. Would you think that odd? <laughs> you know, actually, that, that dinner Wednesday night was so good, I don't think I have to eat for another month. Because why? You know, it wouldn't be that satisfying. And, and yet we do that with our spiritual life, don't we? Well, you know, I, I went to church. Yeah, the sermon was okay. Wasn't that great? It was okay, you know. That, I, that'll feed me for now, and I'll be back in a couple of weeks. You know, not you guys. You know, I'm not talking about you, but... Uh, you know, but that thought of, you know, I just have to feed spiritually, periodically. Or how about this one? I know to, tomorrow night we're going to have, we're going out with some friends and to a really nice place, and we're going to have one of the greatest meals ever. It's going to be fabulous. Just thinking of that, it's kind of like thinking of heaven. You know, I don't have to eat between now and heaven because that's going to be so good. But you go... No, actually, you know, every day, actually a couple times a day, you know, sometimes three times a day, sometimes more, sometimes three times a day and some spiritual snacking. Uh, God wants us feeding and he wants to teach us all day long, every day, not just coming in here and going, well, you know, if John's okay, I'll be okay. And if he's not, I won't. Um, <laughs> Teach me your way, Lord, and lead me because of my enemies, because of the commotion around me. I need you to, to lead me in a straight line because I will go wandering off with my spiritual ADD. I need you to, to lead me in, the, in a straight path. And then he says this. I'm still 
confident of this. And this has become almost a life verse for Eileen and I. I'm still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in this life, in the land of the living. I'm not waiting for heaven. I am confident I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord here. Now, isn't that a great confidence to have? Not like, well, you know, everything's bad now, but, you know, when we get to heaven, everything will work out, you know. You know, David's saying, no, no, no. I'm confident. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in this life. And I think we should claim that. You know, I want that on my gravestone, along with all those other things, like I was too sick and stuff like that. Um, and then he says this, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Now, sometimes waiting for the Lord, we think that waiting is kind of a weak thing to do. It's kind of a passive thing, right? So I love that he's saying, be strong, take heart and wait for the Lord. So I, I did a little word study this week and, uh, and this word wait, Kava in Hebrew, actually. And I was surprised when I learned about this. Okay, so I'm going to share it with you. Kava, wait. What's, you know what it means in Hebrew? It means to gather together. Isn't that weird? It means to gather together, and then it's the visual image of it is then it's like uh, strands coming down that, that you twist. And you twist them and twist them and twist them until they're they're just so entwined, right? They're unbreakable. Now I think of waiting as kind of a lonely thing, right? I'm just kind of sitting and waiting, you know? But that's not what this is talking about. This wait for the Lord is gather together and, and twist your lives together so tight that it's unbreakable. That's waiting for the Lord. Now, I've got another psalm to read. I'm going to close with this. Uh, Lord my God, I am restless. I'm tired. I'm unsure. At times, I'm ready to quit, and yet in the same breath, I'm excited, I'm inspired, I'm expectant, and I'm eager. You assure me in your word that you called me, and you know me, and you see me, all that I am, and I love you for that. Yet, I so often feel aimless, frustrated, and discouraged, and tired of the fight. I need your patience. I need your boldness. I need your conviction. But most of all, I need you. Remember your promises, God, that you'll never leave, never forsake, never forget the ones you call your children. I want your hope in all the excitement, I want your resolution in all the discouragement. And I want your grace to carry me through. And in it all, let me praise you as long as I have breath. I think that's some of what this psalm is telling us. With all the chaos going around, we don't have to be distracted. We can claim God's promise and his presence in our life, and we can seek him one thing, and find ourselves twisted together with each other, unbreakable as we wait for the Lord. Okay. So Lord, we give ourselves to you, holy and unreserved with all the issues and all the stuff that we carry with us. And we pray, Lord, that you would lead us and you would teach us and you would not turn away from us. Amen.